Hi, I'm Jenny Kim. And I'm Daniel Kelly. And we're going to cover how not to teach a music lesson. Which I'm hoping will include some great details on how to correctly teach music. We're with Marie Liquar, based in Hawaii and an innovator in teaching online music lessons, long before it became a standard component of the 2000s. I believe in helping students build a solid foundation while teaching them to maximize their potential. Whether or not they pursue music as a career, everything they do in life will be enhanced by this unique education. And one thing that's important to start with is a great email address. This is a first point of contact for nearly all teachers from elementary music lessons through graduate work. It sounds like you've already got one in mind. Korean with a C, like in corno, get it? I prefer learn to earn. We gotta sell the dream. <sighs> What about cuter tutor? More like tetchy teacher, though I think Marie could totally rock brass babe. You've got all this time to make these vids? It's clear you're a brass bum. Ooh, girls beat pitches. All right, moving on to music lessons. It's always helpful to have a structure in mind. This can benefit both the teacher and the student no matter the length of the lesson. Assuming the student has warmed up beforehand, which I strongly encourage, I start with fundamentals. Establishing a foundation, working on good practice habits, and enacting an ideal physical setup. I begin by assessing how a student is sounding, what's going on with their playing, and what needs improving. I encourage them not to worry so much about the results they're getting at the moment, but to think about the process, which will gain them better results in the future. After fundamentals, we get to the core of the lesson, scales, repertoire, and excerpts. While the basics are crucial, making music is generally what draws a student towards performing as well as taking lessons. A healthy balance of etudes, solos, and orchestral parts keeps the students engaged. Yes, a lot of it might seem too difficult, which can be frustrating, but it's reaching higher that makes all of us finer musicians no matter your level. And then I end by taking requests or questions from the student or a parent. If they want to ask about something, I'm always eager to say yes. It means they're engaged. Playing duets is fun too. The student gets to hear you, and as a teacher, you might notice things you didn't when they were playing solo. And it's not just you warming up for whatever rehearsal or performance you have that night? Well, regardless of the age or level of the student, the overall focus needs to be on helping them sound good with ease and efficiency. Plus, if my students learn enough and they're musically happy, I can earn my teaching wings. There are so many ways teachers can say things that are not constructive. Holy moly, have you like practiced at all this week? Did you ever consider making some music while you're producing those sounds? Wow, you've actually gotten worse. Good job. A feedback loop is a loop that feeds back into itself, meaning that whatever comes out of the loop causes the loop to repeat. Telling someone that they're not good enough week after week does not help them improve. It's important to be positive. Playing any instrument well is difficult, and most musicians are sensitive, meaning that how they feel about anything in their lives can easily seep into their playing. Having a lesson plan is still essential, but you also have to read the students and understand what they're capable of that day. If they want to talk, sometimes you have to. Because if there's no music in them at the start of a lesson, there's nothing to be gained by teaching music. So you see yourself as a sort of horn psychologist? Why not? A major part of teaching is keeping students from feeling defeated, and it's obviously how I choose my teaching wardrobe as well. You also want the students to relate to you. As for what to wear, it's hard to find that middle ground between getting respect as their teacher and being current. So how do you balance what you want to work on and what the students want to do? It can be a bit of a juggling act, but it's also simple. Once a music lesson has started, you've got to roll with what the student can handle musically. You need to choose fun etude books for building technique, not boring ones. If a student isn't entirely engaged playing-wise, you can always talk equipment or accessories that can ease specific playing issues. And you have to understand when a student just needs to move on. Pieces get stale or worse, become impossible obstacles. Sometimes you can distract them by giving them a new challenge, just not more than they can handle, musically or mentally. You don't ever want them to feel like they failed. You can also help them come up with creative exercises to overcome an obstacle, tying them into pop culture or something else that they love. Which reminds me, I have another email suggestion. Horn of the Rings? Oh my. Precious. What about Star Trek? The Trouble, the Trouble. Or Star Wars, R2 Horn 2. BB-8D, Obi-Wan Hornobi, or O, oh, Game of Tones. Oh, practice is coming. I'm guessing you both must have some general rules for lessons. One teaching plan doesn't fit all. You need to keep comments under a minute and never over explain a concept. Mm. They'll lose interest. This video is over a minute. And just think of all the people that didn't get this far. They'll never hear their shout out. If you expect your students to be on time, you need to be prompt as well. Good communication definitely goes both ways. If I text, bruh, can't make it today, an hour before someone's lesson, how can I expect them to correspond respectfully with me? Keep playing demonstrations to a reasonable level. Don't make their time with you a performing clinic where you're just showing off. That's what YouTube is for. Speaking of which, online resources are your friend. It might go against your instincts, but welcome new ideas or concepts from other teachers in any field. Even if I disagree with them, it doesn't mean they're wrong. Cause it's not about us being perfect teachers. 
It's about what helps the students. I also have to make sure that if I'm having a bad day or dealing with any personal negativity, it doesn't trickle into my lessons. It's one thing if a student needs to talk something out, but transferring my emotional baggage to them, not cool. And even when you're feeling badly yourself, you still have to offer feedback that's not damaging, demeaning, or hurtful. What Jenny said earlier about being positive, nothing is more important than keeping the students from feeling defeated. They need to be inspired to practice and get better. Again, this is how I earn my wings. So what about tricky situations? You must hit these all the time, especially since most lessons are one-on-one -on -one in what's essentially an intimate setting. As every teacher knows, that dividing line between a student's personal and musical life can be thin. Every bit of drama they're dealing with can affect their musical confidence and thus their abilities. What's also tricky is handling their expectations of becoming a professional musician. Should we tell them the truth about how difficult this can be? I'm often asked how much money I earn, both as a performer and as a teacher or to rate a student's chances of making it as a pro. But answering these questions with outright honesty would not only disappoint them, no teacher would keep any students. The goal is for them to advance, to gain not only confidence, but enjoyment. What about problematic students? The ones who fight you or get testy at any hint of criticism? That can be challenging. You've got to do your job, which is to teach them, while using finesse to help them improve despite an unwillingness to listen. Sometimes you also have to do damage control, which is fixing everything that goes wrong when a student plays in ensembles or picks up bad habits from other students or when a conductor requests things that don't exactly mesh with what you're teaching. And how about when a student's parents don't pay you? Or if you love teaching someone, but the family's clearly having difficulties, marital, financial, or? Again, finesse. Oh, you guys are good. See, you're learning from us. Another fine line to be aware of is when students want to talk about other students, which can be more than awkward, especially when you're teaching everyone involved. What to do, right? You have to address their concerns in some form, for music like life is a very competitive field. But that's when I need to put on my disciplinarian hat and insist that we're there to work on scales, etudes, solos, and that's it. I prefer to see myself as every student's cheerleader. My job is to push them, but also to boost them so they can fulfill all their musical potential despite heavy competition or worries about professional success. And I'm guessing they're trilled to bits when you show up like that. Uh, more of these? Fine, sponge horn square notes. How about all horned up? No! Though, maybe horn on the cuff or vulgar horn? What about corny potter? It would be simpler to go with corny potter. Uh, no. Something is so not right with you. Maybe he should stick with dumbbell. <laughs> Anyway, do either of you have any final thoughts you'd like to add? You can learn something from anyone, as a student or a teacher. I believe that all students need to develop an understanding of what it means to be a musician today. My primary goal is to teach them to teach themselves and to recognize how working on fundamentals makes everything in music easier. Another benefit of being a teacher and performer is that if you're able to explain a concept to a student while teaching, it reinforces this concept to yourself as well. And keep that feedback loop positive. When young musicians believe in themselves, they can carry this confidence forward and apply it to everything in their lives. Absolutely! Just as students can take the discipline and diligence they learn in music and apply these to every challenge they undertake, this is where I really earn my wings. And I'd say you've totally earned these by now. Chicken wings? Seriously? Oh, you guys. All right, I guess it's time for me to fly.